Welcome to the Forgotten Coast TV Fishing Show. I'm your co-host, Bob Inguagiato, and my other co-host, Captain Chester Reese. We welcome you. We're on the East Point Fishing Pier in East Point, and boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. Hi, folks. In fact, today, we actually have a live fish that you can watch, because <laughs> while we were running the show, here's this fisherwoman. She really did a great job. Captain Chester, why don't you talk a little bit about what she just did? Well, she caught a black drum, probably in the 30 to 40 pound yep. class. And we're looking down, we're located today on the um, East Point Fishing Pier, the old bridge to St. George Island. And we see this lady with the rod bent over down there, about 50 feet away. And I said, I think, Bob, I think she's got something yeah, on there. Yeah, she sure did. <laughs> and so sure enough, she comes walking down. The fish was too big to lip gaff and pull up on the bridge, so they were walking down here to the, to the rocks. And here's this really nice black drum about this size. Yep. She's done a great job. We've got some photos of it and some film on it. And, uh, you know, this is a great fishing pier. People look at this place and go, well, what do you catch here? Well, you can catch pretty much anything go. that lives yeah. in this area. Once they see a picture of this, and this is the third one she caught today. Yeah, yeah, three so of them. That should be inspiring for those folks to say, well, I don't have a boat. What's the sense of fishing? Well, talk to this woman from North Carolina. She's got herself one heck of a good day for fishing. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. You don't always need a boat to fish well. And that's true around here. There are a lot of different areas. I had a, had a fella stop by the Carabelle Boat Club where I was working on my boat here yesterday, and he goes, well, uh, you know, where's a good place to fish? And I rattled off about six different places, and he goes, well, uh, uh, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I said, no, I got six more. And he goes, oh, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> he was confused. <laughs> he, he had enough, he had enough. But that's, that's, that's a beautiful place that we live in. There's a lot of offshore, yep. there's a lot of inshore, there's a lot of bridge, there's a lot of... Uh, beaches to run. Yeah. The, the park down at the end of St. George Island here is an excellent place. Pompano, great Pompano fishing yep. in there. And we're in a perfect time of the year. Uh, you know, we just hit fall. Uh, the fishing is really picking up for sure. So Captain Chester, why don't you talk a little bit about offshore and what's cooking on there? I'll tell you. Especially we, the southern migration. We caught a Spanish mackerel that had to go seven pounds. It was a beauty and there were two other followers with it trying to hit the baits on the surface and they're all coming through here. The baits are starting to pack up. They're starting to move through the area. Uh, the St. George Sound is full of pods of threadfin herring and Spanish sardines. We even saw Elwise up in some of the coves around Dog Island. Wow. So, and, and this is the time of year for that. The water's cooling down a little bit. There's a little photo period change and they're all getting ready to move. Yeah. Another interesting thing that I saw here the other day is the uh, bay anchovies are starting to cluster together and they grow in here in the estuary areas and at this time of year they group together and they'll come out of the passes and Bob Sykes cut in tremendous numbers and outside sitting out there waiting for them to come through are Spanish, redfish, bluefish, yeah. Spanish mackerel, kings, they're all waiting there for this huge yeah. run to come out. We, I've had a couple of people out here over the years that said, you know, there's so many birds dropping and the fish are just churning up like a big washing machine that, you know, she, I, I, it's deafening <laughs> and that sound is just unbelievable. You know, you mentioned Sykes Cut before I forget. Uh -huh. I was talking to a guy who told me a couple of weeks ago or about a week ago, people were fishing in Sykes Cut uh -huh. and they managed to snag a Goliath group of 300 pounds right in the cut wow. itself. Isn't that something pretty yeah. unusual? Yeah, it sure is. There's Those guys, uh, you know, they were federally protected when the uh, populations dropped. Long time ago, we used to be able to hit them with uh, bang sticks, uh, 40, 44 Magnum bang sticks or shotgun. It, they were, it was pretty easy to hit them. They basically lay there and you flap them. Um, but we decimated them, and it was too easy to, yeah. to catch them. So what happened is they became federally regulated, and, and now they're everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's the scuba divers say when they're down underneath the water, yep. you, they can hear them go whoop, 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 oh, yeah. whoop. If you're not paying attention, it scares you. Yeah, yeah. That's really something. What else is happening out there? Well, I'll tell you, the kingfish uh, fishery is just as magical as it's been all year. Uh, there's been a lot of fish to catch. It's been really, really nice. There's been a lot in the 30-pound class. Um, the um, Sea quarters um, shootout, kingfish shootout, did very well. They had one of their better catches in total numbers. Uh, they did really, really well. I think large fish was 47 pounds, and that's a pretty big king. Oh yeah, the is. Spanish are thick. This has been the Kobe. This has been the Kobe a year for us. 
We have caught more cobia this year and seen more than any of the other years I've been up here for the last 14 years. Wow. And uh, it's been an absolutely incredible. And it only gets better because the western migration is starting to come, come through. So you're getting them both ways. We, we, are, we are really excited about it. There have been some big fish. Our biggest was uh, 57 pounds. And that, was, that wasn't me just guessing it. That was actually scaled. <laughs> <laughs> we got some verification on that. Yeah, boat. yeah, because I would have called it a 58, 68, <laughs> 70 pounder. That's a fisherman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. But, but that's been real good. And, and any structure that you see out there, any buoy that you see, have some pinfish with you. Go ahead and drop a pinfish. If they don't get hit in the first five to ten minutes, move to the next buoy. Oui. Going out east pass, hit every one of those buoys. What I like to do is I'll have one free on top, just hook through the lip, and I'll have one on a four-ounce sinker down at the bottom. Let that go. Move to the next one. If you don't get one, you may get double hookups. It's exciting. Cool. I can tell you, inshore fishing is getting hot as a firecracker. Oh, boy. This is a perfect time of the year. The temperature is cooling down a little bit. The, the bait all over Apalachicola Bay. Yes. If you're looking for redfish right now, you want to go to the <laughs> mouth of the St. Marks, Little St. Marks, and yeah. the East River. They are getting lots of redfish out there. Just last week, well, actually, just a couple days ago, uh -huh. I was fishing on, a, on the northern shore of Apalachicola Bay, and uh, I was sur completely surrounded by baitfish. I mean, oh, it really? was absolutely incredible. As I was uh. telling you before, if I cast to the right, I got redfish. If I cast to the left, I got speckled trout. If I cast straight ahead, I got these very large ladyfish. And if I cast behind me, I got that occasional giant sail cat. <laughs> I mean, I, it was and I got them all on the fly. I mean, it was just oh, one of those great. days that I mean, the bait was so thick, I felt like a really good fisherman for a change. I mean, you couldn't do anything wrong. Uh, you know, It's been really good. I mean... Live bait works for sure, it's really the ticket, yeah. but fly fishing is good as well. Uh, if you're going to go out, I'd head for the rivers, yes. you know, that would be my first choice. But they're all over the bay as well, but the bay is just thick. The bait, I guess, is pooling up, getting yeah. ready to go out, yep. and of course, once they go out, the fishing is going to change a little bit, but meanwhile, the redfish are all in the mouths of the, of the rivers going right, right into the bay itself. So you can't really go wrong on that. That's for sure. If you can throw a cast net, you're going to get yourself some live bait. Yeah. And if you're a fly fisherman, this is a perfect time of the year for you guys and women. Uh, and it's only going to get better between now and December. You know, if you really want to catch saltwater fish on the fly, this is the season for it. For Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, folks. And, you, well, you know, you said that, uh, you know, you were throwing in every cast and it made you feel like a real fish. Those make up for those days when oh, you're yes. out there and it's yeah. just oh. not happening. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens to all of us. It's not, you know, uh, it, the, the idea is is to never give up. That's it. You know, I mean, it makes up for a couple of days when I wondered whether I knew anything about fishing or not. You know? But now I feel good all over again. It's amazing how that can change just like that. You know, we were talking about some offshore stuff, and I was talking about pelagics because that's what I really get excited about. Uh, but uh, I was talking to a fellow from a ma local magazine, and he was saying, well, you know, now that wh what are these regulations doing to you? And I said, well, you know, we, we miss catching grouper here up close. But I said, you know, our freezers are full of black bass and Key West grunts. The Key West grunts will be here all year. They're, they never go away in the wintertime. And what happens with the black bass is they're getting ready to go on spawn. And around November, coming up into the, into the later fall, they start coming up and they have what's called sexual dimorphism, which means that the males look different than the females. And those males, the, the bigger ones will come in from offshore, they'll come in a little closer, they'll come in inside of O Tower. Any natural bottom, any limestone karst reef area, that's where they'll be holding, they'll be on the spawn. They'll get that great big hump head and that beautiful blue striping on their eyes. And they are an absolute delicious fish, easy to catch. Uh, you can catch them by you know, normal methods, by using a circle hook, because you must use a circle hook, right. catching bottom fish in the Gulf of Mexico. On a three ounce sinker or two ounce sinker, depending on the current, drop those out. They'll hit that immediately. Or do what I like to do. I'm a lure fisherman like you are. A lead headed uh, jig, white, which is chartreuse, mm -hmm. as we were talking about. That chartreuse, they can see that at depth. And uh, you run that down there with a piece of squid. If the water's a little murky, that squid works a little right. better than shrimp or a piece of mullet. 
but they will hit it like crazy and it's an excellent fishery. Those fish will be this big, but you can catch them all day. Uh, the only limit on that is you can't take any more than 100 pounds a day. Wow, <laughs> that's too bad, isn't it? 100 pounds of fish to take home for your friends and your family. You know, that's great. I, and it, I, I used to be one of those guys that I have a, a special blade knife, a Forstner, and, and you know, it's kind of hard cutting through those. I don't know, I guess it was last year or so, a fellow was next to me and he had an electric knife. And he said, oh, yeah, you don't buy the expensive ones. Get, a, get an inexpensive one. <laughs> he whipped through those things. And I, I had a pile of them. I was there <laughs> like this. He came through, and he was hitting them so hard with the, with the electric knife. He was done in 15 minutes. I was there for an I hour. I have one of those babies, that's for sure. <laughs> Listen, folks, I do also want to remind you that one of our sponsors is Fisherman's Choice here in East Point. That's right. You know, and they have lots of bait and tackle and lots of information. So if you're new to the area or you're just visiting, the best place to go is Fisherman's Choice. Well, of course, if you're on the west side of Apalachicola, we have that new place, Allen's Bait and Tackle, uh -huh. as well. So to save you a trip over, depending on where you're going. I'm going to do a little sidebar here for something yes. a little bit different. About a month ago, a good friend and a very good fisherman passed away. His name was Captain Bill Kohler. Uh, uh, many yes. people know him here. And uh, I, he taught me a lesson, a kind of an odd lesson, is that uh -huh. if you tell a friend that you're going to take him fishing and go fishing with him, don't put it off. Yeah. Because you just don't know what's going to happen in the future, folks. So oh, that's take that friend out fishing because you'll be happy about that whole situation. And we want to wish Captain Bill tight lines up there and hope you catch a lot of fish. Absolutely. Okay? And as you go out there, folks, be careful. Yeah, be safe. Yeah. Wear your life preservers. And don't drink and operate that motor at the same time. That's going to get you in trouble for that's sure. Right. And on top of that, you got anything else to say to these folks? Well, you Captain know, you, you, you said it right there, you know, don't miss an opportunity. It's very important yeah. that when something happens, go ahead and take that. It, it's like I tell people on board the boat when we're fishing and there's a lot of action going. Be quick, take that opportunity, don't squander. Don't squander that time. Yeah, well, you know, you never with know. With people, for people that we've lost yeah. and loved, we could spend so much more time oh. with them and wish we could have. Yeah. I mean, um, Captain Bill, I can't tell you the dozens of times that yeah. we talked about going fishing together. Yeah. And everything, some, something always got in the way, you know? Yeah. And now something really did get in the way on that one. So, take a child fishing as well, you know? They're our future, you know? And That's right. I have a neighbor who's a youngster, probably about 10 or 11, and boy, I could just see that smile on his face when he walks down the road with the fishing rod and his cast net. It kind of brings a joy to your heart that somebody else who's growing up is really going to enjoy the beauty of this sport. Well, that's the way we all started. Somebody took us yep. under their wing, brought us out somewhere, yeah. you know, got us started on it. And, and that's, that's the beauty of this sport. And I guess it's, it's a lifestyle maybe more than a sport. So, you know, pass it on to someone else. Yeah, I mean, I have to tell you, when I was growing up, I had to pester adults to get me, but I finally <laughs> got it. Look at me now. I'm, I'm nuts over fishing. So, folks, we want to wish you well. This is a perfect time of the year to go out there and catch as many fish as you can. That's right. Uh, it's a real joy. The weather's comfortable. The heat is finally backed off a That's little right. bit. That's right. It's only going to get better. Yep. And we wish you tight lines and stay safe. And, you know, it's really important. Be careful on the dock as well as on the boat. You know, it's easy to slip on a line. Make sure your lines are, are furled away. It's important to keep proper seamanship, on, both on a boat, on a dock, on a pier, anywhere you are. Uh, folks. Great having you yep. with us again. And, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, I haven't you seen bet. you in a while. Yep. We need to go fishing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's for sure. That's our commitment, folks. We're going to go fishing together. Okay, folks. Good luck out there, folks. Thank you. <laughs>